session let us start with a new topic that is 9.12 enzymes it is the topic of biomolecules chapter right so the topic which we are going to start today is about enzymes now we know that enzymes are biocatalysts right so what are enzymes they are biocatalysts enzymes are biocatalysts means they are the particles which catalyze the reaction okay so that's why we are calling them as biocatalysts and enzymes are ex enzymes cannot be synthesized they can be extracted from living organisms only so that's why we call enzymes are biocatalysts okay and enzymes are proteinaceous substances enzymes are biocatalysts enzymes are proteinaceous substances what is the chemical nature of enzymes so enzymes are proteinaceous substances most of the enzymes are proteins only except one enzyme which is called ribozyme it is made up of nucleic acid not of protein so enzymes are proteinaceous substances so there are scientists called dixon right so dixon and jolly they defined enzymes as proteinaceous substances performing catalysis defined enzymes as proteinaceous substances performing catalysis but there is an exception that there is one enzyme which is not a proteinaceous substance. What is that? So, ribozyme. Ribozyme is an exception. Why is it exception? It is a non-proteinaceous enzyme. If it is not made up of protein, then what is it made of? Ribozyme, it is not made up of protein. It is made up of RNA. Ribozyme is made of RNA. Ribozyme is made of RNA. And who coined the term enzyme? The term enzyme was coined by Kuhne. The term enzyme was coined by Kuhne. So, what are enzymes? Enzymes are biocatalysts. What do you mean by catalyst? Catalyst is a substance which catalyzes the rate of reaction. Since enzymes are not synthesized, they are always extracted from a living tissue, we are calling them as biocatalysts. What is the chemical nature of enzyme? They are proteinaceous substances. Who has given the definition that enzymes are proteinaceous substances? Dixon and Jolly has given. Now, there is an enzyme which is an exception which is not made up of protein what is the name ribozyme it's an exception it's a non protein enzyme then what is it made of made up of rna who coined the term enzyme the term enzyme was coined by kuhne so we understood what's the chemical nature and we understood like what is the action it catalyzes the rate of reaction right it catalyzes the rate of reaction now since we know that proteins have primary structure Primary structure means it is a linear chain. Proteins have secondary structure also. Secondary structure means helical structure. And proteins have tertiary structure also. They have tertiary structure also. Tertiary structure refers to a globular structure. Tertiary structure refers to a hollow woolen ball globular structure. Since enzymes are proteins, enzymes also exhibit primary structure. They also exhibit secondary structure. They also exhibit tertiary structure. And we know that proteins are active in their three-dimensional conformation, in their native conformation, in their active conformation, which is the tertiary structure. Now, to make this tertiary structure, the backbone of the protein the backbone of the protein is folded upon. It is crisscrossing. That's what I did here. The backbone of the protein is crisscrossing. It is folded to make a woolen ball-like structure in which there are pockets, right? So, here is one pocket. 
here is another pocket here is another pocket here is another pocket this is another pocket so when the protein is criss crossing back folded upon itself then there are certain pockets which are formed so there are certain services which are formed okay there are certain sites which are formed now one such site is called as active site so one such site on an enzyme is called active site now active site is the place on the enzyme for our understanding we we'll make the picture clear simple this is an enzyme and i'm showing one pocket here this is the site which i'm going to call it as an active site means active site is the region on the enzyme where the substrate can come and bind it can it's the region on the enzyme where the substrate can come and bind when the substrate comes near to the active site the substrate slides towards the active site of an enzyme and there is a transition state what is that enzyme substrate complex formation this you can tell it is e and this you can tell it is s so when the substrate goes and reacts with the enzyme enzyme substrate complex will be formed when enzyme substrate complex is formed when the enzyme substrate complex is formed then what happens the close proximity between the substrate and enzyme will allow the enzyme to convert the substrate into a product particle then what happens the substrate gets transformed into product the substrate changes into product let's do that so it got converted so the circle got converted into a square it gets converted into product and then immediately what happens the product gets released out enzyme becomes free and the product gets released out so e plus p is formed this is ep complex and this is es complex and the enzyme which is free here again the enzyme which is free here again after releasing the product you know it is ready to take up one more reaction it is ready to take up one more reaction means enzyme transforms the substrate into product without itself undergoing any change so in the rate of reaction the substrate transforms into product but nothing will happen for the enzyme enzyme remains as it is enzyme remains as it is so we talked about the line equation of the enzyme also e plus s combines to give es complex then when the substrate comes in close proximity with the enzyme then the enzyme transforms the substrate into product again another transition state this is the starting state and this is the ending state these two are the transition states now es transition state gets converted to ep transition state where the substrate has transformed into product as soon as the product is formed the product will be released out and the enzyme is once again ready to take up another substrate to do one more round of catalytic cycle it's ready to do one more round of catalytic cycle okay so if the enzyme has to be in this structure tertiary structure which is supported by so many types of bonds like disulfide bond peptide bond hydrogen bonds hydrophobic bonds van der waals forces all those things the enzyme should be at its optimal temperature and optimal ph It means stability of the enzyme stability of the enzyme is one factor so which defines the enzymatic activity and again thermostability is an important characteristic we are telling because enzymes they act at optimal temperatures enzymes they act at optimal temperatures so there are certain bacteria which grow in hot springs they are called thermophilic bacteria thermophiles now if the bacteria is growing in high temperatures then those enzymes what we extract from that bacteria are also thermotolerant then right so usually we tell usually we tell like thermostability is an important characteristic right so uh, what are enzymes then they are biocatalysts in your chemistry you might have are studied about catalysts also right so they are called inorganic catalysts so inorganic catalysts differ from biocatalysts 
in many ways. In organic catalyst like metal atoms, in organic catalyst what are they? They are metal ions. The metal ions differ from enzymes by catalysts in many ways. But the main difference is, but what is the main difference? The main difference is the inorganic catalyst means a metal atom can tolerate. It can tolerate high temperature, high pressure. So, it is active at even at higher temperature, it is active at higher pressure also. But biocatalysts, which are proteinaceous substances, which are supported by many bonds, the tertiary structure, right? So, it is thermosensitive. Enzymes are thermosensitive and enzymes are barosensitive to the pressure also they are sensitive. Now, enzymes act at a optimal pH. They have certain conditions, optimal pH. They act at optimal temperature. They act at optimal substrate concentration. So, the main difference is, so they will not, inorganic catalysts will not denature. They will retain the activity. They still active at high temperatures also, at high pressures also. Whereas, biocatalysts which are proteins, they are thermosensitive. If you increase the temperature beyond its optimal range, it gets denatured. And if you decrease the temperature beyond the optimal temperature, then it is inactive. Then they are sensitive to pressure also, they are barosensitive. Enzymes act only at a narrow range of pH, temperature and substrate concentration. Even though there are many differences, this is the main difference what we see the difference between inorganic catalyst and organic catalyst. Now, this is our topic 9.12. In the next topic, 9.12.1, if we have to discuss what is a chemical reaction, when we have to discuss what is a chemical reaction and how do enzymes do the chemical reactions, how do enzymes do the chemical reactions, if we have to see chemical compounds undergo two types of changes. So, chemical reactions means chemicals only participate, right? So, chemical compounds undergo two types of changes. What are the two types of changes the chemical compounds undergo? So, one change is a physical change and another one is a chemical change. Now, what is physical change and what is chemical change? Again, Physical change can be of two types again. The first type of physical change is a physical process where the chemical changes in its shape. So, a physical change refers to change in the shape of the compound. When there is change in shape of the compound, it is a physical process then. So, what is this? It is a physical process. Now, there is one more physical process, there is one more physical change, it refers to changing. The second type of physical change refers to change in the state of the chemical. The second type of physical change refers to change in the state of the chemical, solid becoming liquid, liquid becoming gas as a change in state which is also a physical process only. Now, when you carefully see these two type of physical changes, it is not at all involving bond forming or bond breaking means a physical change refers to a change where bonds are not involved. So, bond breaking or bond making is not involved here. It is not involved. Then call it as a physical change. Now, coming to a chemical reaction or a chemical pro change. What is a chemical change? As you told, a physical change is not involving a bond making or bond breaking. A chemical change involves, it involves bond making or it involves bond breaking 
ultimately it is the transformation ultimately it is the transformation of substrate to product ultimately it is the transformation of substrate to product here now if we have to take an example to see how does the reaction takes place how does the substrate gets transformed to product means we can take the example of barium sulfate plus sulfuric acid when it reacts then it forms a barium hydroxide with H2SO4 it forms BASO4 and it forms water it forms water and uh, barium uh, sulfate now this is a reaction but which type of reaction it is it is an inorganic chemical reaction it is an inorganic chemical reaction but involving a chemical change because bonds are broken and bonds are made here there is a transformation of the substrate to the product barium hydroxide got changed to barium sulfate sulfuric acid got changed to water molecule so there is a transformation of the substrate to product and such type of chemical reactions are called inorganic chemical reactions if we have to list down examples for organic reactions means breaking of starch starch is a polymer of glucose when we break starch we get glucose molecule breaking protein molecule protein is a polymer of amino acids when you break protein by protease enzymes we get amino acids so breaking of starch breaking of protein to get monosaccharides to get amino acids will be the examples of organic chemical reactions they are examples for organic chemical reactions then we will tell now when a uh, catalyst is there then the process of conversion of substrate to product will be fast and when the catalyst is not there then also the reaction might occur but it occurs at a slow rate so then we are, when we talk about a rate what is rate rate is for these many substrates got transformed into these many products in how much time okay so now when we have to see an example for a chemical reaction organic chemical reaction when we have to see an example for organic chemical reaction so breakdown of starch into glucose molecules breakdown of protein into as many amino acids as possible as many glucose molecules as possible i kept infinity there so this is an example of a chemical reaction now why i am talking about rate what is the rate of reaction rate of reaction refers to the amount of product formed per unit time in this much time how much product is formed that is the rate now if you have to see the rate now rate equal to delta p by delta t how much product has been formed in how much time is called the rate of the reaction now rate can be called as velocity it can be called as velocity so velocity has a direction right so rate can be called as velocity if the direction of the reaction is specified if the direction of reaction is specified then we can call the rate as velocity is it a forward reaction or a backward reaction when we tell that then it becomes velocity okay then we can tell that the rates of physical or chemical processes are influenced by temperature the rate of physical and chemical processes are influenced by temperature temperature is an important factor which will influence right so there is a thumb rule there is a thumb rule like it says there is a thumb rule which says that for every 10 degrees rise in temperature enzymatic activity will double 
for every 10 degrees rise in temperature the enzymatic activity will double till the optimal temperature is reached. Beyond optimal temperature, then for every 10 degrees rise in temperature, enzymatic activity will reduce to half. And for most of the enzymes, the optimal temperature ranges at room temperature. So, the optimal temperature for most enzymes is room temperature. But there are certain bacteria, there are certain bacteria which grow under the bacteria which survive in hot springs. The bacteria which survives in hot springs are thermostable bacteria. They are thermostable bacteria. Now, the enzymes which are present in this thermostable bacteria, the enzymes which are present in this thermostable bacteria, they have thermostability, they can tolerate 80 to 90 degrees temperature. Bacteria which survives in hot springs are called thermostable bacteria and the enzymes extracted from these thermostable bacteria can tolerate temperature up to you know how much 80 to 90 degrees centigrade. So, thermostability is a property of thermophilic bacteria. Okay. So, what did we discuss so far? We have discussed uh, what is a chemical reaction? How do enzymes do the chemical reactions? So, and chemical reactions, they are influenced by the temperature. And then when we see like enzymes, what do they do? Enzymes catalyze the reaction. Now, I told like without the absence of enzyme also, a reaction will be catalyzed, but it will be at a slower rate. Let us take an example of carbonic anhydrase, which is specified in the NCRT textbook to understand how fast the reaction will proceed when a biocatalyst like carbonic anhydrase enzyme is there. Now, let us talk about an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic and in the absence of carbonic anhydrase also, carbon dioxide combines with water molecule to form H2CO3 carbonic acid. This is an uncatalyzed reaction. What is the rate of an uncatalyzed reaction? Means 200 molecules are formed you know per hour 200 molecules are formed per hour in absence of an enzyme now when we take a catalyzed reaction when we take a catalyzed reaction means in the presence of an enzyme how many molecules of carbonic acid have been formed means it is 6 lakh molecules per second you know 6 lakh molecules per second a catalyzed reaction. You can just estimate what is the rate, what is the fastness the enzyme will do. Means the enzyme has accelerated the rate of reaction to 10 million times here. So, uh, enzyme carbonic anhydrase has accelerated the rate of reaction how many times from 200 molecules per hour to 6 lakh molecules per second it has accelerated the rate of reaction to 10 million times which we call it as the turnover value the turnover value of carbonic anhydrase is maximum so which we call it as turnover value of this particular enzyme, turnover value of this particular enzyme. 
So, and then if we see the chemical reactions, so there are thousands of enzymes which are specific for specific reactions. There are thousands of enzymes which are specific for specific reactions. Okay. So, some processes are linear and some are circular. Some steps are mediated by one enzyme itself like when we take here carbon dioxide to water formation of carbonic acid. It can do also, it can break also. Now, this carbonic acid is converted to bicarbonate ion and H plus by the same enzyme. The enzyme is doing this reaction also. The enzyme is doing this reaction also. The enzyme is doing reversible reaction. So, we have seen that one reaction can do many steps also and one reaction specifically will do one step only. For example, we see in glycolysis, glucose which is a 6 carbon compound is converted to pyruvate which is a 3 carbon compound and we think it is a single reaction. No, it is a complete process which is glycolysis. So, glycolysis is a 10 step reaction mediated by 10 enzymes. It is mediated by 10 enzymes. Now, this glucose is a substrate molecule and pyruvic acid is the product. Now, depending upon the circumstances, how the product gets con changed, the fate of the product depends upon the conditions. Now, in aerobic conditions, the pyruvic acid molecule is broken down into, which is a 3 carbon compound, is completely split into 3 carbon dioxide molecules. In anaerobic conditions, such as in the case of yeast, the pyruvic acid molecules breaks into two carbon compound called alcohol and the single carbon comes out as CO2. So, C2H5OH with one carbon dioxide, 2 plus 1, 3 carbon. In our muscle or in lactic acid bacteria, in our muscle under anaerobic conditions or in a particular bacteria called lactic acid bacteria, lactobacilli, here three carbon pyruvic acid gets converted to a three carbon acid which is called lactic acid. Gets converted to three carbon acid called lactic acid. So, the, the end product formation depends upon the conditions, right? Now, when we see the next topic 9.12.2, how does the rate of reactions happen at a faster rate? Then we need to draw a graph to understand that. What should we take on x-axis? What should we take on y-axis to understand in presence of enzyme, how does the reaction takes place? In absence of enzyme, how does the reaction takes place? Means the progress of reaction on y-axis, enzymatic activity on x-axis if you take progress of reaction when we take here and potential energy we need to take progress of reaction we have to take on y-axis and we will take pro right one minute. We will take the progress of reaction on this scale x-axis and the potential energy on the scale y-axis and when we draw Now, this is the energy where substrate is located. 
this is the energy where product is located means substrate is at the higher energy level when compared to the product and this is the substrate energy and this much is the activation energy this is called the activation energy in presence of enzyme and this will be the activation energy you know in absence of enzyme activation energy in absence of enzyme now when enzyme is not there the energy which is required is this much when enzyme is there the activation energy which is required is this much and what is activation energy if you see activation energy is a barrier energy it is a barrier energy and then enzymes energy it is enzymes fasten the rate of reaction you know if the enzyme has to fasten the rate of reaction the barrier energy it has to decrease that's what it is doing enzyme fasten the rate of reaction by reducing the activation energy by reducing the barrier energy it is reducing the barrier energy what is the barrier energy let us write down in the bracket it is activation energy whereas the ends uncatalyzed reactions in the absence of enzyme that barrier energy is this much only and then when we see what is this type of reaction here when the substrate is transformed into product this much amount of potential energy is released means this reaction is called as exo dermic reaction or we can call it as exergonic reaction what what is exergonic reaction it is called spontaneous reaction what is spontaneous reaction in spontaneous reaction the substrate has high energy and when the substrate is transformed to product energy is released right we are seeing here energy is released we need not activate it spontaneously it will occur such reactions are called exergonic reactions we call them as exothermic reaction if the energy released is in terms of heat energy now on the other way what are endergonic reactions endergonic reactions means so we need to give energy to the substrate molecule substrate is at the lower end then we need to give energy to the substrate molecule and activate the substrate molecule to form the product means endergonic reactions they consume energy and exergonic reactions they release energy so with this we clearly understood like how will enzyme catalyze the rate of reaction now when the enzyme is combining with substrate there are transition states es is a transition state ep is a transition state finally e plus p is formed finally e plus p is formed and during the formation during the conversion there is an obligate formation there is an obligate association of es complex so we will tell that es complex formation is an obligatory step it's a compulsory step then only the substrate will be in close proximity to the enzyme then only enzyme can modify the substrate into product particle and es complex and ep complex are the transition states so with this we finished our lecture today it is about who coined the term enzyme what is the chemical nature of the enzyme what are physical reactions what are chemical reactions what is turnover value which enzyme has a highest turnover value and we discussed what are exergonic reactions and endergonic reactions hope you understood the lecture if you understood you can like share and subscribe thank you